does get to some national team matches are moving forward. Herrera stays on side. A lovely ball to Malik. Osama Malik cuts back. Here's a chance, Karuska. It's 1 0 for Adelaide, Marcelo Karuska. Well, what a calm, what a calm and clever finish. It's just composure. He gets the ball, he makes it look easy. It's like time stands still. Karuska, it's just a side foot. He almost passes it into the net. It's a terrible mistake from the Mariners' defence. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, of course. But, but when you are young, you you don't feel that pressure. So maybe when you get older, you start to feel more more pressure when when you play. But uh, at that moment, I was enjoying it. Uh, I was living the the dream, you know, playing yeah, for uh, sure. playing in Europe, uh, playing this kind of tournament. Uh, it was uh, was something uh, unbelievable for me and also for for my family at the time. Uh, uh, I grew up very, very quick uh, when I went there because I left when I was 22 and I was living with my parents there. So I left and I, I went to, to Turkey, different country, different culture. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, was, it was a bit difficult the first six months, but uh, after I signed five years, uh, I was there and I uh, started to play, I started to feel better. And yeah, and after a couple of years, I, I left, I went to 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 Mexico to find to try to, to play more games yeah. Uh, and yeah finally I came back to to Argentina uh, playing in three different clubs there mm -hmm. and in 2012 I had the opportunity to get to this amazing country uh, that I call my home now. Absolutely, um, no, it's fantastic to uh, to hear about how your journey came to what it was. Um, just before we get into your time at Adelaide United, um, I just want to touch on uh, your experience playing uh, youth international football with Argentina. So uh, it's one of the less publicised facts about you that you were a member of Argentina's 2003 uh, FIFA Youth World Cup squad where you played alongside household names like Javier Mascherano, Carlos Tevez and Pablo Zabayeta. Argentina also performed strong, strongly at that tournament as well. Uh, they finished fourth overall. Can you just briefly take us back to this time? Yeah, yeah. I was playing in uh, Estudiantes de la Plata actually after the two games. Yeah. The, the national team coach called me and I joined the, the, the club, the, the, club the, the team. And um, after a couple of months, we prepared to play the South, South American, and that is the tournament that we play in South America to for qualify to the for the the World Cup, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we won that uh, tournament and we played really really well. We became champions there, and after we went to the to the World Cup, and uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, Tevez couldn't come because he was playing, and the, the club didn't allow him to come. But we did really well. Unfortunately, we we finished uh, fourth that year. But it was a, another great experience for me. Yeah. Oh, fantastic to hear. So um, that brings us back to 2012, which was the start of it all. So uh, we'd come off a disappointing season in 2011-12 uh, under John Cosmina, who had just returned uh, to the club to uh, repair things um, after Rennie Cullen had been moved on. Uh, now, you were undoubtedly his biggest off-season signing. Here's what Michael Petrillo, the football director at the time, had to say in the lead-up to your arrival in Adelaide. So, the quote is, All of our reports have indicated that Marcello is a high-quality player and individual. He ticks all the boxes that Cozzi has been looking for in the type of player he wants. And we're expecting him to not only add some real quality to our play, but he's also an exciting type of player that not only our fans, but football fans in general, will want to see in the A-League. Do you think, um, you know, speaking humbly, which you are, um, that was pretty much on the mark in regards to uh, the kind of player that was about to arrive? Yeah, look, um, I was uh, in Argentina playing in, in San Martín de San Juan, and uh, after the season finished, I was looking to, to go to overseas again. I spoke with my family, okay, something happened, something some opportunity come from Europe, we, we, I think we would take it. And after a couple of months, maybe yeah, a couple of weeks, I was talking with one of the one club in Argentina, it was uh, Quilmes, that is next close to La Plata, where yeah. I was born, when I was living. So this was, uh, I was talking with the, with the coach, and he said, yeah, no worries, we, we, we want you here, we're gonna give you a contract. I said, okay, no, perfect. So a couple of clubs called me and said, no, no worries, I already have uh, an agreement with the club. Mm -hmm. And after the day before the, the window closed, yes. the, that, this, the same coach called me and said, look, sorry, but the club do not give you an offer now. Oh, wow. So it was a bit uh, yeah, difficult absolutely. at the time, yeah, yeah because I, I already said no to a couple of clubs, I said, okay. So I spoke with my agent and I said, look, this is uh, an opportunity to go to Australia. Mm -hmm. And I said, Australia, okay. I started to Google, I started to do some research. 
It's about Adelaide, about Adelaide United. I call, I remember I called Patricio Perez, he was a, was, he's an Argentinian guy that we used to play together in the 20. He was playing for Central Coast. Okay. Yes. I don't know, maybe was, yeah. 11 ish, 10. 10, yeah, yeah. maybe, yeah. yeah. And I called him and he said, look, if you, you, you have the opportunity, you, you go because it's a beautiful city, beautiful country to live, uh, the lifestyle is fantastic, as, um, but don't think it's going to be easy. Yeah. Because we don't know nothing about Australia when you are in Argentina, we don't see any games, we don't watch any games here. We, sometimes we, we hear something about, I don't know, kangaroos or koalas. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a that's stereotypical it. view. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's true. So I did some of my research, I called a couple of friends and everyone was telling me about the lifestyle here. I said, okay, let's with my family, I said, let's, let's go, see what happened. I signed two years contract here, I came and, and yeah, I fell in love with the country, with the city straight away. So, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Um, so you enjoyed an excellent first season with Adelaide. Uh, you scored five goals in 22 games. However, things uh, went sour at the club as we suddenly parted ways with uh, head coach John Cosmina halfway through um, that first season of yours. Ensuring the club uh, was embroiled in turmoil throughout the remainder of the season. Um, were you convinced you'd still made the right decision to come here throughout this time? And did you have faith that the club would recover by the time of the 13-14 season? Yes, of course. Uh, I, I came here trying to, to play, to show my football, to help the team and to to be successful and uh, I have this in my mind and at the moment uh, I was uh, playing all the time with, with Kossi, yep. he gave me the chance to, to show my football here, I was enjoying a lot uh, since the first day I came to Australia, so I always believe that uh, I always, I'm always positive, optimist guy mm -hmm. and always think that if everything is going to be better yep. and I work very hard for that also as a individual also as a team uh, I remember we created a good group from the first for the first uh, time the first year um, yeah and after that, everything started to change and you know how, how finish after a couple of years of uh, course we, we, we finish winning everything and mm. something Great, uh, yeah. Um, so I just want to ask, when Cosmina left, um, did that sort of um, negatively impact things at all? Because we're playing some fantastic football throughout that period. Um, there were a few upsetting results. I think we got smashed away at Western Sydney, maybe 6-1. But other than those few games where uh, things didn't really sort of happen for us, we were playing some very good football at the time. Yeah. And it felt like um, it was a season that we really could have gone on and, and achieved something. But in the end, we just fell a little bit short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember we, we played the finals. We have a pretty good team. Mm. I remember we played with Dario Bidosic in the middle. Correct. Bruce Chite at front. Uh, we Ferreira as well, I think. Yeah, yeah Ferreira came after. We have a pretty good team, but uh, you know how the final is. Yeah. And unfortunately, we couldn't achieve anything. But uh, the, the main thing was that they maintain most of the players. Yes. And I think this is uh, the key of the success that we got after. Okay, yeah. Um, no, I think that's pretty much on the mark. So uh, just moving along. So uh, it was then during the 2013-14 season that the club decided to take a chance on the highly ambitious but rather inexperienced Spanish coach, Josep Gombao. Ultimately, you and Josip uh, formed a successful partnership uh, professionally, uh, as he would later sign you at Western Sydney. However, um, what were your uh, first thoughts about him when he first came here? Um, and did you think he had it in him to revolutionise the way our team played its football, as well as how the club operated culturally? Yes, yes, definitely. Josip brought his style, his uh, Spanish style, trying to play from the back, you know, and trying to to be the owner of the, the the game all the time, to get the ball, to play the attractive football, and and we did it. It was difficult for the first time, for the first training, it was difficult to understand what he okay. he tried to 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 do with us. He tried to play a different kind of football that mm -hmm. uh, was the difficult at the first maybe three four weeks to understand and to uh, to buy what he wanna do it. Uh, but after when we understood exactly what he wants and the way that he want to play every single game, uh, everything changed. Uh, the first games uh, we, we started losing, we didn't, uh, 
we didn't play the way that he wants and uh, of course it was difficult because we we try we we changed the, the style of playing uh, almost no 100% but uh, a lot of things a lot of new things and for the for us was uh, was uh, tough but after when we learned exactly the way that he wanted uh, we we start to enjoy playing enjoying and have fun inside the pitch and it's something that this give you the confidence and uh, start to win games and uh, yeah this i think it was was uh, the key to start to enjoy the, the games did he because this is a um a point about history that a lot of people are interested in and fascinated by when he first came did he um was he able to get all the players to buy into what he wanted straight away like was it meeting the players and then from that point everyone was on board or did he have to convince a few people for a bit of time yeah of course it's, i think like every coach the more difficult thing is the management mm -hmm. to manage uh, 23 players uh, it's just not easy and of course there is player that would like the the life is the the playing, playing style, style yeah. that he he brought and they are, I, um, they were players that didn't like it but uh, sometimes uh, even if you are not agree with things you he was the boss mm -hmm. and we follow him we follow him, we support him, and, uh, and we did exactly what he wants. And after we, we, we become a champion, and uh, this was something that uh, grateful for the club. Mm -hmm. First time the, we played the FFA Cup and we won it. Uh, and after we won the, the championship and we finished first, we won the league because it uh, was a big part because of Joseph. Okay, no, I think that pretty much checks out with most people. So um, it's always refreshing to hear uh, someone validate um, just how important his ethos was when he first came to the club and what he wanted to install. So um, I just wanted to touch on that quickly. So anyway, you ended uh, that season um, with exceptional form on a personal note once again. Um, you scored five and you assisted five uh, in 13-14. It was then in the 2014-15 season when we really started hitting our straps as a team. Uh, we won silverware for the first time, as you just mentioned, um, winning the FA Cup. You yourself were, give, were going from strength to strength as well uh, you scored seven goals in 19 games during that season where would where we would eventually go deep into the final series but ultimately not um, win the main trophy now in your third season in the a-league what were the main observations you'd made as to how football in Australia although still evolving differed to Argentinian football when I arrived here I saw a couple of difference compared with Argentinian football uh, but uh, in the end of the day, I was playing, I was enjoying my football, and uh, and I didn't feel the difference. To be honest, mm -hmm. we created a good club, a good team, and uh, we were playing well. We were enjoying the the games and and winning games also. And I think uh, uh, I adapt very quick to this uh, football. Um, yeah. To the edge of the ground, all over, and sign autographs for the 5,000 odd fans that were there. That's a lovely ball for Kariska, lovely touch! <laughs> but the only goal stars are in front. Nine minutes on the clock, and Marcelo Kariska has the goal. There hadn't been a whole lot of Argentinians that had played at the highest level that had a history of playing here in Australia. Um, there's an interview uh, in Spanish of you um, in one of the, uh, I think, I assume it's one of the, the bigger sports television networks in Argentina um, giving an interview predominantly about your time here. It was around 2014, 2015, I think you were giving this interview. Mm -hmm. um, was there a lot of like interest in the fact that you'd gone all the way to Australia, which is a pretty sort of unknown terrain back home in Argentina, especially in regards to football. Were, were people quite interested in um, kind of understanding why you'd come here and what it was like in Australia, not, not just in regards to football, but <coughs> lifestyle as well? Did you get a lot of people asking you questions at home? Yeah, yes, yeah. of course. Of course, yeah. but because there is not many, many players that came to this country and stay. Um, and uh, of course, when I come back, always in holidays to Argentina, always someone called me to ask me questions and to to compare the lifestyle, to compare the football in Australia. Because as I said before, um, we don't know anything 
from Argentina, we don't know anything about Australia. So it's quite interesting to know uh, what's happening here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, of course I I got a lot of calls and still the people is trying to to call me and yeah. trying to ask me about about uh, the national team also now because Australia is going to the to play the the Copa America next year. Yes, you know, it's a the, big, big, now, yeah. now the the people start to call me again and start to ask me yeah, about how how the Australia play, about the players, and yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, no, that's very interesting. Um, so after a lucrative exhibition match against Liverpool in the 2015-16 pre-season, Josip Mbao walked out on Adelaide United and Guillermo Amor was handed the reins. This set the tone for what was to be a disastrous start to the greatest season in the club's history. We didn't win a game till round nine, uh, then won 13 of our next 18 games. Everyone uh, obviously knows the story of how our season panned out. We finished first and went on to win our maiden championship in unbelievable circumstances. For me, uh, the uh, true turning point throughout the season was uh, when we beat Sydney at home in round 10. On. Bodies there for Adelaide, that's a penalty. Well, a penalty. Virtually the last minute, Jacques Fati spot the silky Marcelo Karuska. Puts it away, and Adelaide win 2-1 in a match laced with controversy. Absolutely incredible, what a finish. And Kuruska. And I reckon everything evens itself out. Well, they had two goals disallowed first half. You can argue whether that was a penalty. Graham Arnold wasn't. It looked like a, a spot kick to my eye. And that was just first class by Marcelo Kuruska. When you converted that last minute penalty, as this was when we proved we had serious character and spirit. Can you reflect on the entirety of the 2015-16 experience from your perspective for the viewers? Yes, as you say, the, the, first, the first couple of games, first night games especially, uh, we couldn't find the way, we couldn't uh, win any game. Even we played well a couple of games, but uh, we, could, we, could, we couldn't get points. And after that game against Sydney when we won it, um, I think it was a big boost for us. Uh, and everyone started to believe. Everyone, everyone started to buy into and uh, we, we, I remember we have a, a meeting and uh, after that meeting when we talk about uh, what we want to do, uh, what we want to be, this year we we we, we try to believe in us and uh, I think uh, everything start to change. After we'd gone uh, nine games without winning, um, what changed? Was it player driven? How much was it more involved? Mm -hmm. um, what was really the turning point and how did it just all click together so conveniently? I mean, we know that we had a very good run with injuries, but it just felt like a, a dream run in the end. Um, was it something you'd ever been a part of before? Was it a completely new kind of experience? Yeah, yeah, it was, was very, pretty different. I never experienced this before. Uh, like you said, we, we have lucky with the injuries. We didn't have many injuries at the moment. And when it, we start to win, everything start to change, uh, the mentality, you know, and uh, even in training, we were playing better, we were enjoying more and uh, I don't know the happiness come back to to our life, to our trainings, and uh, and we were very very close outside the, the pitch. Also, we have a fantastic group. I remember everyone get along with everyone. We don't have any issue. Very good guys at the at the moment. Uh, everyone was fighting for 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 each other, and uh, I think was uh, the main thing. As I said before, that the club maintained most of the the players since we start with Joseph and this was the key that uh, we won what we won in, in 2016 because uh, we know exactly what to do. I knew it when I had the ball, I knew Isidio what he's going to be, I knew Bruce Chite what he's going to be when I had the ball. If I know exactly his run, I know how Isaias think mm -hmm. in different situations and I think team, the teams when they are, they, they succeed is because they, they got players that played together for, for a while and this is something this is not happening unfortunately in Australia where the players got one two year contract and after they go to another club and after they go to another club and it's different to find 
clubs that win trophy every year. Yes, I of think uh, Sydney we did very well yeah. a couple of years ago until now, but uh, except, except for, for them and for us, there is not many clubs that maintain the same people, the same players. Um, you, Steph Mork, is, is, um, is it one of the best midfield threes you've played in ever? Mm, yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think playing with the with both was uh, was brilliant because they ran for me, so I was, <laughs> I was very lucky. Uh, I remember Isaiah, she's a machine. Uh, even Stefan was was young, very young, yeah. uh, and I was telling him where to go, and he ran. He yeah. he, he went everywhere, and uh, we we play. We play very well. I remember him, Isa, even Sirio, Bruce, uh, Pablo. Yeah, I don't know. Obviously, yeah. We have uh, a lot of good good players at the time. Even the Eugene, the, the defensive line, everyone, everyone. Uh, we were lucky also, as I mentioned, Pablo. We have very good players at the bench also. Uh, made the impact when they come on, and uh, yeah, we have a great great team. Um, I want to ask, uh, just on the eve of that grand final, um, it was obviously a huge day, how much belief did you have that we were going to go ahead and win this? Like, was there ever any doubt at all in your mind that um, it no. might not have happened? You were fully confident? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was very, very confident. Uh, I know the team that we got. Of course, in the final everything can happen, but uh, I believe uh, I believe in the team and uh, I believe in every one of my teammates. So I was very fully confident that we were going to win. Yeah. Um, so after the emotional triumph of 2015-16, uh, the club underwent a massively disappointing title defence in 2016-17. Um, what went wrong for us throughout this season, um, in your opinion? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know, it's difficult to find an explanation. Uh, I think we, we were playing also as in Champions League, that I wasn't involved, but... Uh, we we draw the standard. Everyone start to start to play differently, and uh, we couldn't come back from that. You know, we have a horrible season, unfortunately. Maybe because we wanted the uh, before and after we relax. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, different factors, different things happen, and uh, that's why we 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 didn't maintain this uh, level of football that we we have in uh, 2016, but this is football and uh, these kind of things happen. This uh, season, 2016-17, uh, was sadly going to be your last with the club, uh, as in July of 2017, after 114 appearances, 25 goals and four memorable seasons with Adelaide United, your time as a Red officially came to an end. Cello, um, you know, was it sad to leave the club? After after four amazing years, yes, yes, of course, because it was my my home, and uh, I didn't expect uh, to leave. But you know, in football, uh, sometimes this kind of thing happen. And, yeah, all uh, good things I, end eventually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I went to Melbourne City with Michael again, Pedrillo gave me. So another. was was he key in in getting you there? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. He was a sport director. He's still the, the sport director there. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, he called me, he knows what can I bring to the club and uh, after it didn't, didn't happen because I didn't play much with, with the yeah, coach yes. but uh, yeah, I was, I'm always very grateful with, with Adelaide United first because of them I'm an Australian citizen because of them I'm, I'm living in this beautiful country and giving my, my kids the opportunity to live here mm -hmm. Um, and also to Michael Patricio because he, he brought me to, to Australia. Of course, um, group, beautiful segue into the question on your citizenship. So um, you were proudly awarded Australian citizenship in 2017. Here's what you had to say at that time about becoming an Australian cello. So you said, I like Australia and I would love to keep living here and playing in the A-League. After all, the main reason I became an Australian citizen is to give my children a good life and an even better future. You. Yet, even if I do play abroad for two or three more years, I'll always come back here because this is my family's new home now. I want to live in Australia for the rest of my life, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, just 
tell us more about um, you know how how much of a uh, fantastic uh, experience it was for you to be awarded your citizenship after spending so long in this country which I'm sure when you'd first come here you probably didn't think you were going to be here this long did you no of course not yeah when you when I came here we, we spoke with my wife I say let's go there try have a, a different uh, different experience mm-hmm. and always thinking and come back to to, to Argentina but after a couple of years, uh, I met really, really good people here also. And I was enjoying my life, my football, everything. And after living the, in this country, we, as I said before, we want to give to my kids the opportunity to live in this, in this country that give you opportunities to, to grow, to, to achieve whatever you want, mm-hmm. if you work hard. So it's a... Uh, uh, it's something I always be grateful. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So um, you then went on to finalise your professional career um, after you'd been at Melbourne City to sign at Western Sydney, where Josip Kambau had come in um, five rounds into the 2017-18 season. Um, can you briefly sum up your time uh, with both clubs? But obviously, you've told us a bit about City. So at Western Sydney, back with Josip, um, obviously. Um, there's still debate now as to whether he was um, removed fairly or not because you know less than one season there mm-hmm. not a whole lot of time and he'd shown um, previously that you know it would take at least one season after the example he'd set here with Adelaide um, anyhow Josip uh, was was moved on and that ended up being um, the last taste he had uh, playing professionally um, what was it like yeah look uh I don't have much to say about uh, Mebu City. Yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't play much. But uh, about Joseph, yeah, straight away when he called me, I flew to from Mebu to to Wellington uh, and to play. Yeah. So the, the first game I play, I come on, come in the second half. Uh, I started to play straight away with him and he he know that he gave me the confidence again and I started to, to play every game and I play almost yeah I think every game 15 16 games was uh, from January to, to June and after unfortunately Jose didn't uh, finish his contract and uh, yeah I couldn't stay there but uh, of course uh, always was uh, enjoyable to, to work on the Jose. did you see it improving? Um, or did you think that maybe the club did need to go in a different direction? The club, uh, I, I think the club should keep him. Yeah. Because as we know, Josep, uh, without precision, uh, it's difficult to to understand and to play the way that he wants. Because uh, same that happened to us. We we were playing totally different. And he need time to, to for the players to understand what he wants, and uh, he didn't have that time. And I was to Sydney, and he was coaching uh, during the season, and it was almost impossible to change the the style of playing, and uh, that's why he didn't uh, succeed over there. So, uh, Cello, you effectively called it a day on your professional career after the 2017-18 A-League season. Uh, you returned here to Adelaide to play part-time in the NPL competition with West Adelaide and to resume duties with your academy, which had already been established before you'd left. Um, you ended your time with West Adelaide perhaps prematurely. Can you divulge into the reasons as to why this was to be for all the viewers? Yes, when I came to come back to Adelaide, they started to just be with clubs to keep playing because I was feeling well and fit and I still I, ha- I thought I have one more year maybe to play and enjoy my last year play here in NPL while at the same time doing my academy. Mm-hmm. But after I started to train and doing my academy full time for the first time in, in since I start because before when I when I created the academy I would work in in, in schools and yeah. now uh, I started to, to work for the whole year and it was something different for me and I thought I could handle you know, training with the club and also doing the academy but sometimes finish the academy, run to the change room to get changed, go to the pitch and train and uh, wasn't uh, 100% uh, you know convenient yeah, 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 it wasn't fair also for the club, I wasn't in, in doing all my best mm-hmm. and I've always been very professional 
And at the moment, I wasn't doing my my best for the club that they gave me the chance to to play in MPL. So because uh, I want to be more focused in the academy, and um, the main thing was to to help the kids. And I thought it was uh, better to to finish and don't play anymore and keep uh, keep training and keep uh, helping the kids. Uh, development uh, that was my my key since I came to, to Adelaide. Yeah. Were you surprised by the standard of the MPL? Um, did you think it might not necessarily have been as challenging as it was um, coming into this competition? Obviously you've been a professional for a very long time and played a, a high standard um, since probably the year 2000 so mm. probably it hadn't been since grassroots ages for you that you were playing in front of you know very small crowds every week not training five times a week you know did you did you it, perhaps it come into it and expect that it was going to be a bit easier than it was so it's different it's, it's sort of different compared with the a league or professional environment mm. uh, just training three times a week and as you say uh, was different was different uh, i wasn't enjoying much mm -hmm. Um, and as I said before, the, my main objective was to be focused in the academy and to to guide the kids and to help the kids improve their skills and development. And uh, and I thought it was uh, the right thing to do just to to finish mm -hmm. my my playing career and uh, be focused on hundred percent in what I want to do now. So, Chelly, you now have a full time focus on maintaining and growing the Karuska Football Academy. Tell us about the academy and how viewers of the show who have young kids with a strong appetite for football can go about getting involved with it. Yes, the academy, we start working in the school first. Mm -hmm. and now we are, I'm doing for all the year, doing sessions during the week and also Saturday mornings. Um, the main thing is to share with them my experience, my knowledge, try to guide them, teach them the proper skills, you know, and showing them how to do it. And this is the main thing, try to help them to, to, to improve their skills because it's a um, focus on the technical part of the, of the game. So mm -hmm. hopefully I can, I can help everyone to, to improve the, the football level. And uh, for parents that are watching that might be interested, um, if they want to go about trying to initiate contact so that um, they can get their kids involved, what's yeah. the, the best way to go about doing that? Yeah, they can go to the web page that is uh, www.karuskafoodalacademy.com.au yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's all the information there, all the program that we are running. Um, yeah, they can send me an email if they want. Um, yeah. And there's flexibility for kids to be involved in your academy, academy as well as playing um, for a club as well? Yes, yeah. yes, of course. This is all, what I want that the kids do, you know? Yeah. Check with the clubs and also came with me. Uh, we work more in technical stuff. Um, yeah, and I think we, between the clubs and, and the academy, we, we can help the kids to, to improve. So, yeah, happy to, to help everyone. And do you have a, uh, a certain number of glowing stars right now that you can see that have the potential to, uh, to go all the way that are with you right now? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Isai Star, we have a couple of very, very good kids, good skills. But as I said before, it's also about to be a good person, you know. Mm -hmm. I teach them the, the discipline, the respect, uh, the hard work, and uh, it's not just come and play football, it's, it's true football teaching them all the, the, the values that my parents are, are, and, and my ex-club taught me since I was very young. And um, it's a very like rare opportunity that these kids are going to have because um, there aren't many people here that have the amount of experience you've got having grown up in a different generation in you know on a different side of the world where things aren't necessarily provided to kids like they are here. Yeah. A lot of kids here have everything they need on a silver spoon, you obviously didn't grow up, you, you had to work for everything and so um, coming from that kind of a background where you can share that experience, you know, that's a very rare opportunity that, that exists so yeah. um, I, I really uh, would implore every uh, parent that has a, a prospective football talent that watches the show to, to get involved with the Marcello Football uh, Academy, Marcello Corsa yeah. Football Academy. Yeah. Thanks man, yeah it's true, it's true because uh, always I was thinking also to do a, a tour, go to Argentina, show them where I grew up, yeah. where the pitches I used to play, 
you know, the level of the, I don't know, the grass that they, the, most of the pitchers don't have to okay. balance. Uh, these kind of things that uh, you can show the kids uh, how important it is, how, how, great, how uh, lucky they are to, to live and grow up in this country. Yeah. And maybe they can value things more, you know. So I understand coaching at the top level is a future endeavor of yours. You put up some pictures on the academy socials um, of you doing, uh, I think it was your pro license. Be license, yeah. Uh, recently. Um, so, Cello, I have to ask, uh, will we one day see you in football management at the top level? I think one day, yeah, yeah. but not, not soon. I think uh, now I'm more focusing uh, just in the kid development. This is what I want to do. Just to share my experience with the, the young generation of players yeah. and trying to guide them and trying to help them to 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 achieve uh, and be a professional player one day. Uh, this is something uh, I want to do now. I'm doing. I'm enjoying a lot. And uh, in the end of the day, it's more about how they uh, become good footballers are also a good person. You were under probably five professional coaches throughout your time here in Australia, four or five at least. Mm -hmm. um, where did it uh, compare to people who had coached you in Argentina and also in Turkey? And, and who was your favorite coach? I'm guessing yeah. it was Joseph, while you were here. Yeah, yeah, look, I had good coaches in my career, but I was very lucky, very lucky. God, in Argentina, I had Bilardos that was, uh, they won the World Cup with Argentina in '86, mm -hmm. and they they went to the final in World Cup 90, 1990, and I got him for a couple of years, and he he told me a lot of a lot of things. Uh, I learned from him a lot. Also, I got uh, Savela, that was also the Argentinian national team coach, uh, in the World Cup a couple of years ago, and. Uh, here in Australia, I had good coaches also. I don't know, I enjoy with everyone had different uh, characteristics, have different uh, opinions, and uh, I learned a bit from for everyone. I think uh, I was very lucky, I got very, very good coaches. Yeah, no question about it at all now. Just a quick, quick question I've got. Um, my favorite goal we ever scored was, I think, during your first ever season at Wellington away. Um, have you got a personal favorite? Yeah, yeah, that was one of the best, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any others that spring to mind? Just maybe one I scored against Melbourne Victory. Yeah, uh, was was a good one. The penalty I always scored was uh, difficult. I remember more the celebration of the goal, but yeah. it was a, it was a nice nice moment. And the uh, assist against Sydney FC in the FA Cup. Yeah. Um, Chell, I got some fan questions for you. Yeah. So. Um, We'll see how these go. So Ilya Tsikiris, now we've kind of covered this. Um, Ilya asks, uh, what was your tenure at West Adelaide like and why was it such a short stint? Um, you've kind of divulged the reasons as to why that was, but do you want to maybe give another summary as to, was it just, yeah, couldn't adjust to, to playing part-time? That was yeah. the main hurdle? Yeah, it was the main thing, to yeah. be honest. Uh, was, uh, do is 50%, uh, you know, doing academy and, and playing there, also I'm doing my academy in the same ground that we train. Yeah. So as I said before, we fi finished the coaching and after I went to the change, we get change, I go to the beach, train. And you know, I'm not 20 years old anymore, yeah, so yeah. I, yeah. I got a couple of problems and yeah. This is the main thing. Yeah. Artificial surfaces are an interesting point though, aren't they? Because most clubs are getting them now. Yep. Yet, um, you know, as a professional, you spent your entire career obviously playing on proper grass and um, particularly playing in uh, those early summer months, it must have killed you. Exactly. This yeah. is another reason that I couldn't play uh, on my 100%. Um, okay, uh, Dimi Panna asks uh, the best advice you were given when you were young. Best advice always I have my, my the, the best advice from my parents that uh, they always taught me to be hard worker and uh, never give up and training and love the game. I think my, my father loved the game and we watch football all, all the time at home and that is something also that uh, the different if you compare with Australia is uh, is a big difference because 
unfortunately the kids don't, can't watch any games here mm -hmm. so to to create the football culture is, is very difficult because they don't consume they don't watch games they and it's not the number one sport there is not the number one sport even it's not the second yeah or the third yeah so I, so yeah as i said before hopefully one day will be the first or even the second one mm -hmm. uh, after footy um, and the kids uh, have more passion for the game you yeah. know this is something I also I'm doing with my academy sharing my passion with them and uh, I want that they have the same passion and also play with the with the I don't know try to encourage them to to yeah. be to be better to be to be the best uh, if they want to be professional players no doesn't matter but uh, in whatever they do they have to do with 100% and uh, give their best. Beautifully said. Um, Stuart Paul asks, what is your view on Amor and who was the best United coach you had? Yeah, he was a good coach. He was, uh, he didn't talk much with us. He, uh, he wasn't very close with the players uh, compared with Joseph, for example. Mm -hmm. But uh, when he came to, to Adelaide, uh, and he took the, 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 the coaching role um, he brought different ideas mm -hmm. uh, we changed a couple of things uh, in terms of playing style and I think uh, he helped us to, to, to be and to finish uh, champion uh, I think he was a big part of the, of the, the championship and uh, yeah did he try and be more of a sort of European style manager as opposed to a coach, which Josip was more of? Um, did he try and sort of emulate, um, you know, for instance, what the head coach of Barcelona would do now, which is to tell their first team coaches how they want the team to play and then the rest of the time they spend in their office picking the team, trying to work out what yeah. kind of transfer they're going to do. Was he more like that? Yeah, it was a mix, I think. Uh... Also, Paul Marti was assistant coach yep. there, which also, also have a big part. He was running uh, almost every session mm -hmm. with Joseph or with Guillermo, and he was very, very important for us as well. Uh, Nicholas Di Pasquale asks, what do you think needs to change in Australian football in order for us to produce more world-class players? I think... Uh, we, we don't have all day, though. <laughs> no, I already say that, I think. Yeah. yeah. The main thing at least uh, the kids uh, spend more time with the ball. Yeah, yeah. that's simple. Simple to that. Yeah, there is no rocket science. Just to teach them the proper skills, show them how to do it, and after practice, practice and practice. Can you give us a bit more of a behind the scenes look at um, what went on at Adelaide United in the aftermath of winning the championship? Obviously, you're a family man now, but cello. Uh, socially, were you quite the party boy back in Argentina? Had you ever partied as much as you did after we won the championship in 2015-16? Uh, yes. Yeah? Yes, <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, but it was a big night. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was a big night. Um, but this, this uh, over life, as a, when you become a soccer player, you can't go out much. You need to be very very responsible, you need to be very professional since from very young age. Uh, I remember my, 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 my friends went out and uh, it was at home, you know, because I had the game on Saturday mm -hmm. or, or Sundays. And all these sacrifices that we have done when for all our career and nobody see, uh, there is something uh, that after when you have time and you achieve something important, you you celebrate uh, of course uh, uh, 100 percent of course uh, you, the same way that you play the same way that you celebrate also um i haven't had a guest come in that a won the championship so you're the first one so we're very grateful secondly um i haven't had a guest that's come on who played against liverpool in that exhibition match now you've bought the kit behind me there yes um, do you want to hold that one up and do you want to tell us what it was like to play against one of the biggest clubs in the world in front of a packed crowd at yeah. that level yeah i remember it was a great game yeah very great game i enjoyed it a lot Actually, uh, I think I got I, I, I play really well that game. I feel very 
very good. I remember Greg King, the the fitness coach, was telling me that I didn't sprint once at the game. But you didn't need to. <laughs> and I, I told him, that, no worries, I don't need to. <laughs> but yeah, it was, uh, was a very good experience also to play against this uh, this giant club here. Absolutely. Um, did you get to meet um, all the players? What was that like? Uh, not really. No, no just uh, no, just we played the game. No, we say goodbye. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And that was Joseph Gombau's last ever game. Yes. Yes, it's true. Had, had he, because obviously you had quite a close relationship with him. Had he? Um, sort of signal to you that he was going to leave before the announcement um, happened? We were talking before about, yeah. but uh, yeah, it was a bit uh, surprised for us because uh, we all were, were thinking that we're thinking that he he stay with us, but we know how uh, coach's life is. Mm -hmm. um, he was looking for other opportunities, and we wish him all the best, and he left. As we wish you all the very best, Marcello, in your future. It's been fantastic getting you on the show. One of the greatest players to ever play for the club. Four very memorable years at the club. Um, I've got a few kids that you played in uh, behind yes. us here, yes. including the anniversary kit uh, all the way down there. Right. You are firmly ingrained in our club's history, Marcello. And, um, from uh, everyone at Pure Red Reds, we wish you all the very best with uh, your future, whether it's uh, the majority of it is in Australia or not. Um, we wish to uh, continually see you around the club. I've seen you around uh, at the uh, the cup final recently, and I know yeah. you go to one or two United games as well where yeah. you can. So, uh, mate, it's been very, very, very insightful having you on. Um, thanks for coming in, and uh, all the best, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers.